Okay, here we are for our um, pick a card reading um, for October the 8th, 2020. And we're going to do three different piles um, for this reading today. This is for the week of October 11th to the 17th. Does that sound right? Just going to double check. Is that the Sunday? Yeah, Sunday to Saturday. Okay. Awesome. So, as you see, there's there's five decks here. Five wanted to be here today. Wow. I think there's some big messages. So there they are again. And um, while I'm shuffling. You can see me for a bit and I'm going to make three piles, okay? So as we're thinking about, oh, before I do that though, I really want to bless the space. With a little bit of smudge. Has it wanted that today? I never know if it wants Reiki symbols or if it wants smudge, but today it's smudge. I have a feeling there's some stuff, tower moments happening for people. I can feel it in the ethers. Um, big time. Okay, the amethyst. And I'll be using, what did I say? Three piles using five cards. Five cards. Oh goodness. Okay. Ah, uh, three. It came out just like that. One, two, three. Well, I guess they mean business tonight. Hmm. I got. That's funny. I got a real kind of uh, peppery thing going on in the right side of my mouth. Pepper. I'm sorry, but that's what I'm eating right now. <laughs> so, chili peppers. <laughs> oh, well, you don't need to share that with me. <laughs> I'm I sorry. Love you, I'll take it back. Yeah, I love you so much. <laughs> These are our two dear friends of mine, Becky and Michelle. I love them dearly, so they're always supporting me on my journey. Uh... So what do we what do we got now? Oh, we got the mystical oracle, and I and I will on the YouTube when I post it, I'll put all the names of the decks that we use, but I will also mention it um, as well. So we had the wisdom hidden realms, the wisdom of the hidden realms by Colette Baron Reed, and then this deck is also by Colette Baron Reed with two other folks, Alberto. Villo Do and Marcelo Lopez, and it's a mystical aim shaman oracle. Um, oh dear, we don't want all those cards. Get those back. Still too many. What do we want to know? What's the energy for next week? And how can we align with that? With our highest good. Well, they're being a little stubborn. They say, you don't want all those cards? Well, it's going to take a bit then. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, a whole bunch jumped out. So I'm just gonna, like, I mean a wad of them. So I'm gonna just take the top two. Okay. Hmm. The next deck is this beautiful mystical goddess, Tarot. 
and my dear friend Michelle Gaden, Sage Holloway, and Catherine Skaggs. This is a beautiful deck. I love this deck. Okay, Spirit. What is the energy for next week? Again, it wants to spit out a whole bunch of cards. Uh, one. There he is. Okay, these two don't want to go. <laughs> That's too funny. Okay, they don't want to go back, so they don't have to. The next deck is the Akashic Records deck another excellent deck that i love which is by sharon and klingler and sandra and taylor beautiful deck also full of wisdom in this deck so spirit what are the messages from the akash for us for this coming week of energies Oh, they, they're giving me clumps. There must be a lot of <laughs> review, redo, review, renew, whatever it is. Transformation, transformation. Let's see what this is. Oh, okay. What can you share with us, Spirit? We just need two more cards. Okay, that one. That one. Awesome. One more from Spirit Song Tarot. All kinds of totem animals in this one. Really beautiful. Did you see it, Beth? Another one that I really love. This is the one I found in San Francisco in this little shop. Yeah, off the beaten path. You can get it online, but it was just cool where I found it. So Spirit, what messages do you have for us for the coming week? Okay, there's a four. <laughs> fourth card. Fourth card is the collective card, the opening card, I guess. That's what they're saying. So um, we're going to go with that. Hmm. And, um, okay, what I'm going to do, so if we need any clarification for any reason, we can always do that. And um, we don't have anybody else coming on yet. So if no one else jumps on it's 7 15 then we can make this a more personal reading for you guys and that means um you could pick a pile and i can read that pile for you personally there's a choice of that so there's three piles you could have a personal personal now keep in mind i'm recording this <laughs> um but i could also pause it um, and the third one could be the collective or just pick a pile. We could, we could stay with the theme so that everybody who watches it then can pick a pile. How's that sound? And then if you want, you can also pick a, um, a deck to, um, get a card, but I may just say, oh, we'll clarify that with a card if we're not too sure that it's not clear. I think that's good. Okay. Um, and while we're waiting, so I'm going to put the stones on so people can pick um, which pile they want. So I'm going to show you that. Can you see them? So think about your uh, question 
for uh, next week. Think about what you would like to know or need to know for the upcoming um, upcoming week of energies. Keeping in mind the Mercury retrograde and the Mars retrograde that's still going on. Okay. You got it chosen? You picked your cards? Yeah. Can you hear me okay? Is it loud enough? Okay, good. Want to make sure. Now, this is an experiment today. So, um, I'd like everybody to see the cards, but maybe what I will do is just show you the cards each pile as I do them. And then when I'm talking about it, I can just show myself. Maybe that would work. We'll see. Okay, so the card for the collective. Ooh, I believe it's a major arcana. Oh my goodness. Well, it is a major arcana. It's a it's temperance. Balance and harmony. So what this means is the collective, anyone that's, um, I'm, I'm thinking of uh, the light workers and I'm thinking of those who are really drawn to be awakened right now. And so next week isn't about trying to get things done. It's about finding balance and harmony in the, in all the things that show up that want to be addressed or want to be done, like finished, because we're in a place of reviewing. So they could be relationships. They could be uh, how we feel about our jobs, um, but relationships will be really starred on October 27th um, because the, the retrograde will be in Libra. which is about justice, Libra. <laughs> Interestingly enough, right? Um, balance and harmony. And yet you remember the, the scales for the, the Libra sign, right? Even though that's not next week, but that's what's trying to come into play for the collective. Is anything that is, is rubbing up against for the highest good needs to shift and move and clear needs to move and clear and if it doesn't then the divine will either step in or humans will make those decisions and when i say the divine steps in it's just it moves things out of the way for us which is kind of cool because that's been happening for me big time just making sure that there's a clear pathway in order to move forward. So this is the zebra. I just want to, oh, in this, that it's drawing my attention is two things. There's like, it, I want to say it feels like the sun, um, but I don't think it's the sun. I think the sun is over to the right on this card, but kind of like a a crescent moon and then this this feels like kind of like a planet going retrograde actually interesting and then there's little windows but i also see them as crystals which is kind of neat and when we look at we think of crystals we think of balancing our chakras perhaps or clearing energy. So don't be surprised if next week is about clearing a lot of energy out of your physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual to bring balance and harmony. So uh, there's two things they're telling me. One is about self-care, to take time for self-care. And the other is to really listen to where your dreamer, your higher self is taking you or wants to take you. So resistance 
what will resist will persist. So if you resist anything, because you may be afraid, this is where you want to really sit back and go, what am I afraid of? That's what this is about. That's for the collective. It's scary times. People are trying to figure out where they belong, what they should do. Oh my God, my life is changing big time. <laughs> so it is. So it is. All right. We're going to look at the first pile and mail the cards. Look at the first pile, which is the amethyst. Is that the first card? No, it isn't. This is the first card. Well, I'm going to lay them how they came out. This is the reverse. Take a good look at this. Ah. So this, this pile has an interesting energy to it. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. This is in reverse. So this is the eyes of beauty, positive expectations, clarity. It's in reverse. Two and five is a seven. What I sense with this in particular is that um, someone is not very clear about their dreams and they're seeing it that it's not, their sacred dream isn't coming towards them. And you notice she's got like, and I should probably turn these around so you can see them better. I didn't think of that because to you, she's upright. Is that correct? Right? <laughs> it's the other way around. So what I'm going to do so that you know, what's upright and what's reverse. I'm going to read the reverse cards because I think it gives a message, an interesting message of the contrary so that you can actually look at the opposite meaning. So, the eyes of beauty, positive expectations and clarity. So there just may not be enough clarity or a positive reinforcement about where your dream is taking you. And so all that means at this point in time is that you need to gain clarity um, and taking more time to connect in what that sacred dream really is. And here's the little thing that you need to know, because if you keep changing your mind, spirit won't be clear either. And so things will not move ahead. So what's tricky about that is that you have to um, connect with your heart what's the most important thing to you in your whole life. Like the, the thing that makes you just, it's so yummy. You just want to hug it. And I had that feeling today. It was so yummy. I just wanted to grab it all and hug it. So that, that's the best way I can describe that. Um, what, what also is in here is there's a glimmer in the background of light. And so there's little pixies, little, oh yes, they're little, little fairy pixies just there to remind you. So you might have fairy pixies reminding you, uh, pay attention to that. They're trying to get your attention. She also has the veil over her face. So the veil is very thin and will be thin by well, the most thin it's ever been by Halloween. And um, interesting that on Halloween, we have another full moon in Taurus on a Saturday. I think I'm going to celebrate Halloween, <laughs> right? Now, let's just take a look at this card um, before I move on to the next ones because... 
I want to see what the reverse says, and then I'll give you the energy of the other cards from this pile. Um, the eyes of beauty. So if it's a challenge with the eyes of beauty, as a challenger, the eyes of beauty are a sign that self-centered fear expressed through harsh judgment is behind your current circumstances. Are you seeing only the flaws in your circumstances or in another person? Are you looking at what is wrong instead of what could be made right? If you take some time to adjust your eyes and see things exactly as they are, you cannot help but admire their perfection. Release your expectations and demands and be with the truth of the way things are now. You're whole and beautiful and perfect, and what you observe is too. It may not be exactly what you want, especially right now. But perhaps shifting your vision, you will find clarity and you will see that it's exactly what you need at this time. A total shift in perception is what is required now. So we know with Mercury retrograde, revisit, redo, reanalyze, it's all the re re's. And so that's an opportunity to get clarity on a path. So I view that as a positive thing. That's what that's about. Then we move over to the beloved. So what this is saying a lot to me at this point, or anyone who picked this pile, is, is the higher self. So this is about self-love. How do you love yourself? When you love yourself so much, then you're able to love another as much as you love yourself. And then abundance starts flowing because it really doesn't matter who loves you or who doesn't love you. You love yourself. And therefore, spirit says, oh, gosh, just, just let the abundance roll on in. The heart's open. So this is saying keep your heart open. Even though this stuff is going on, keep your heart open. It's very important. And then we come to this wind card. Wind, like the wind. And we know wind is about the mind. Um, and it says pessimism. And this person is in this box. So the mind is trapped. So if the mind is trapped, it can't possibly sit in a place of self-love. If you, if you got that hamster on the wheel, it's going around and around and you got these negative thoughts going on and you want everything to be perfect before you move ahead. I guarantee it's not going to be perfect. It's just not. It doesn't work like that. Um, so this is somebody. Somebody uh, is having a hard time bringing in the fruition of their dreaming. Because of all the things that may be taking you down the rabbit hole. Like negative things that are happening. Taking you down the rabbit hole. What's the rabbit hole? Well, you know, it could be just such a strong belief of something that takes you way off track to where you actually should be. And that's often what does not serve us in the way of having clarity about what the path you should be on. And this may be a challenge right now. The seven of wind. But that being said, I also know that if you keep, keep going after those pessimistic thoughts, they will dissolve if you allow the love to pour in. That's what this is saying. And the card beside that is the one of keys. Uh, and it's the architect. I just need to look at this picture because I've never seen this one come up. This deck is fairly new, but um, I, I can't remember if keys is pentacles. It may be in this deck, but what we have here is new beginnings, new creation, things going on, work, work, work. Don't let this get in the way of this great thing that you're building um 
these two cards are just warning about what could happen next week if shit hits the fan, so to speak, with the Mercury retrograde. Don't um, take it to heart so much. Just revisit what you haven't learned. Revisit the trigger. And, and then make a decision about what you're going to do better next time or how you're going to have a strategy to deal with it next time. That's all that's required. And then leave it. No attachment. But there's great things being built. Like, you know, when they say Rome wasn't built in a day, <laughs> they're all building and doing something here, right? And with great, great expectations of building this amazing city, the sky is clear and there's a little bit of smoke. I see. Wow. Well, it could be a cloud. I'm thinking... I feel that there's something going on here ceremonially from another lifetime that is helping along this process. So this particular pile is really expressing um, the stop and go of Mars and the possibilities of things getting in the way of success. But the beginnings are there. You just have to take the veil off and see the beauty that's already been made. So that's what's going on with that. Seven of shells, choice, ambitions, and it's in a reverse. This means, you know, you could have made some decisions in the past that have kind of flip-flopped this. You were coming out of the um the place of not having enough and then went oh wait a minute hold on uh i don't know if i want that and you stop the process and that's because this card this card of pessimism is coming into play so they're saying for next week is that you have an opportunity to revisit this scenario. If this is a scenario for you that keeps happening, you can revisit this and make different choices. If that makes sense. Now, I'm wanting to read this card because it's more of an oracle card. I like it. It's five. That's the human world. And having our heart open for the human world, as we all know, is a big challenge. Someone also in this pile, whoever picks this pile, um, is having a relationship issue and they're trying to decide if they should stay or if they should go. And we may have to pick a soulmate card for this pile for those who are having that particular issue, trying to decide, should I stay, should I go, should I stay, should I go. So the medicine, well, okay, let's talk about the essence. The essence is the beloved is the recognition of spirit in another and moving towards spirit through the other. It is when the divine appears to us in the form of our child, our partner, our friend, and we experience being in love. As we grow, we start to recognize the beloved in everyone, not confusing their personality with their divine nature. The invitation is to accept the invitation to learn through the path of love. So as I said, it has to start from within. Expand your being through union with another. Where you experience the explosiveness of love is when you can love yourself as much as you would love another and share that with someone. When you recognize the beloved in another, you, fall, you call forth their highest and purest nature. Follow the path of love, always. Even if it's difficult. Even if the person's difficult. Always follow the path of love. And the medicine is, be careful with romantic love. So that's why I said there's somebody here that is having to make a choice. 
uh, the kind of love you fall in and out of. Own all the projections you have placed upon the person you are dreaming of. Remember that they are only mirroring back your own deep longings rather than revealing their true selves. If you fail to notice this, be prepared to walk through the fire of strong emotions once again. If you've been knocked over the head like this many times and have walked that path, it is it you need to revisit this next week. I'm saying this because how important is it? It's pretty damn important because when we get to December 20, 2020, and we go through the winter solstice, it's going to be a huge shedding. And if you haven't shed it yet, the divine will step in. You're going through, going to be going through a triple gateway of change. So next week is an opportunity to, to resolve that once and for all, whatever it is for you. Um, before I go on to the next one, I really want to look at the wind card. Which is, oh yes, that mystic goddess. Pessimism, wind, seven of wind. The moon in Aquarius. A woman imagines herself to be stuck inside a box like prison of her own making. Her pessimism has created a mental outlook of self imposed limitation. She is projecting these attitudes into her world and they are reflected back to her. She has trapped herself in the seven dimensions of hell on earth, even though in reality she could walk out of herself, made prison at any time. So true. I think this is like the seven of swords. I believe. I haven't got used to these. Um, yeah, the thoughts and minds. These decks with different names. interesting nonetheless it is about having a very um to march tumultuous tumultuous time with the what's going on in the mind like i was saying um and this card serves as a stark reminder that how you perceive your world and the attitudes you hold toward others determine the quality and choices of your life being boxed into a limited hellish reality can show addiction to negativity and pessimism. Explore and root out habit patterns in yourself of anticipating the worst possible outcome and finding negative qualities in others. Now is the time to give thanks for all you have with a positive new perspective and change your world. Change it up. That's next week. Change it up. This is self-explanatory. We don't need that one. And the seven of shells, choice and ambition. Um, now, you know, this might be expressing, do we actually get onto that card? Mm. <laughs> it's a lobster, so when I see this card, I think of that TV uh, show. <laughs> He's my lobster. Choices and ambition. So, um, oh yes, here we go. I'm seeing in this, oh yeah, there is, so this is in reverse. So what I like about this is that there is, is change happening. Oh, I know. I did talk about this lost opportunity all of a sudden it changed it it energetically changed as i was talking about these cards so there's another message for somebody else with this interesting i, I like it when they change up things so fast holy let's just go to the seven of shells ah uh, yeah it was like I said, confusion, feeling trapped, lost dreams. Where 
if you can get this turned around, like get this turned off and get involved with this, the architect, things will happen. I like, you know, notice this too. Um, this one's reverse. This is in a, an illusion place. This one's right side up. This one is a pessimism card and it's right side up. In between something that's really great about creating your new world. And then this is lost dreams, feeling trapped, confused. Like, where should I go? Should I stop? Should I stay? Ah, I don't know. So for the, anybody who has a relationship issue that's going on with this pile, I'm just going to pick a soulmate card. Huh? There's two, two messages. This soulmate deck is soulmate cards like that. And it's Nurturing and Attracting Love Relationships by Tony Carmen Solero. Life is a cycle of changing seasons. Let us welcome each new season and surrender the past with grace. Let us remember that nothing is ever lost. For all exist eternally within the heart. Let's do that. Love overcomes all obstacles. A change in attitude is all it takes to turn things around. Trust in love's power, it will transform you, and the one you love all will soon be clear. So there isn't, you know, next week's just the energy that you're gonna have to face a hard decision, like I said, and but it's gonna clear. The Mercury retrograde ends on November 3rd. And so next week might be a little tough for some but you'll, it'll clear and it'll get to the other side. So that is pile one. Oh, pile one. Very interesting. Pile one. And this is like my snake agate. So I love that. Okay. Pile two is the uh, chakra wheel with the crystal in the middle. What does this have for everyone? And that's not the first card. This is the first card. This is in reverse. I will turn them around, so don't worry. This is right side up. This is reverse. This is right side up. This is reverse. So, make sure you can see all the cards. Keeper of the scales, fairness and balance. Again, balance. So the collective card that we picked was balance and harmony. Uh, the Ancient Ones, this is right side up. This is the first card in that deck. Beautiful. So I'm getting a sense for all this now. This is reverse. Fire the Courage. This is Leo energy for sure. Oh. And this here, the Lookout, 17. Oh, this almost feels like a tower moment. This is right side up. And this is reverse. Seven of acorns, determination and stamina. Uh, this is like the seven of pentacles, I believe. And that's reverse. Interesting, same spot as the other, the first deck. So there might be a bit of a story happening with all three decks. The keeper of the scales, fairness and balance in reverse. 38, three and eight's 11. Uh, this could be about a twin flame situation. Um, you might be at the wit's end of a relationship where you, you've done chasing that twin, but that twin is supposed to um, teach you about personal love or self. 
Um, there's something here again about balancing the scales and that's what next week is about. So again, <laughs> they're saying balance has to come in next week. It has, this has to happen before the end of the year. This is a year that finishes up everything that was going on years ago, years ago. It has to be completed. Um, the ancient ones. So what I'm seeing with this card, the ancestors love us. Those They've loved us for always since always. They, they care for us. This is the one card. This talks about the sun. And um, to me, that, that, that gives us hope. That gives us the ability to, even though next week is going to feel kind of crappy for some of us, Think about the sun. Think about the ancient ones and all their trials and tribulations they had to go through. And look where you get to be right now in this beautiful time on earth. This is a beautiful time to be on earth. And they're supporting us more than they ever have, ever. Because we're, 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 we can see the finish line in the sense of we're going to get to a new level of vibration. That's what that's about. Then we have this fire, courage, have the courage to step into what's changing. Next week's going to be hard. And so you may not feel that courage. I see there's like fire flames. It's a seven again. So the dream, seven, we had three sevens. Seven in the other deck. Seven is the theme. And don't let go of your dreams. Do not let go of your dreams. Do not let go of your dreams. That's what they're telling me. Do not let go of your dreams. I'm pretty adamant about that. Leo energy. Um, this could be a relationship again. Talking about a relationship. A tower moment is going to look out. Like, look out. I is like, look out. But I'm like seeing it as look out. The tree's gonna fall on you. The ship is burning. So this is a 17, one and seven is eight. Karmic patterns, karmic patterns. If you have karmic patterns, then oh, please, goodness, see someone about resolving those karmic patterns. Turn them into dharma um, quickly. Like get it looked after. If these things show up next week, which they will, I guarantee it. Um, Healing past lives is probably one of the most amazing ways of moving your journey forward and onward. But not only for things that weren't so great, but bringing in the lifetimes of beauty and knowledge and accessing that every day. If you've got a gift and a magic essence that you have not used, next week you'll get to review that. And they show up in a particular way for you. And then we have the seven of acorns, determination and stamina. Well, you're going to need that, um, but it's in reverse. So what is it telling me about this card? Uh, that might be Miss Sue coming in with that bump on. Um, the seven of acorns, determination and stamina is the thing that you're going to need but maybe you don't have right now especially next week it's going to feel really crappy um it's like i can't go on i just can't <laughs> i can't do this another day you may have that kind of feeling but don't give up i'll tell you why yeah you know something's going to happen a big decision is going to happen and it looks like spirit's going to make it for you. But the ancestors got your back. They got your back. So you're not alone at all. Ask them for help. That's what they're telling me. You have to ask for help. Which, um, I'm just getting a poke. We need to look 
the card to keep your scales. You know, that's kind of explanatory, this one. It's the ancient ones that want you to do. Okay, the first card. The essence, the ancient ones are the shamans of old who defeated death and escaped from the tyranny of time. Hmm? The ancient ones once walked their earth like us in flesh and bone, and now they reside in infinity and can counsel us after we say yes to our calling. They are available to help us attain our full realization. They are. They help me every day because I ask. Every day. The invitation. The ancient ones are inviting you to reach the future to help birth a new destiny for Earth. And the folks that are on this reading tonight and those who will be listening later know what this card's about and why. It's important for us to remember that. Because it may seem really hard right now and it may really seem that life's against us. But we're here for a reason. It's to create a new destiny on Earth. Go ahead, find out who you are becoming 10,000 years from now. If you accept the invitation, great power and blessings will come your way and allow you to craft a new destiny for yourself. Do not hesitate to bite off more than you can chew because you have unlimited spiritual resources available right now. And that is the truth, folks. That is the truth. The medicine, the ancient ones beseech you to examine your attitudes and actions and be sure that they are of the highest integrity. You know, what I can speak about that is you have to know when to, you have to know when to fold them like that song, <laughs> like the Kenny Rogers song. You have to know when to fold them. Because maybe you've given something a real good try. I mean, it could be a long marriage. It could be a working relationship. It could be anything like that. But freedom and, and moving forward and understanding your gifts will not happen until you let that go. And I've done this a couple of times in my life. And just another big one. So, uh... What I could say is if your dreamer is taking you on a path, listen to the dreamer. Your dreamer is very wise. But as long as you gave it your all and you did your very best that you can do at this point in time in your life, then you've done all that you can do. And honor that. that that's the best thing. Not forgiving an ancestor or yourself is keeping you from the freedom you seek. That's what I guess I was trying to say. I didn't read it, the next sentence, so I just did read the next sentence. But, but it gives you freedom. It frees your body. It frees your mind. It's so important. Remember, this is no longer your karma when that happens. We just have to say, I get, I'm not going to do this anymore. That's pretty simple, right? Step out of the box. You can break the chains that once bound you to the family drama and be free of your generational curses. Forgive the ones you need to release and on and forgive yourself as well. And then honor your biological ancestors by lighting a candle to them tonight and thanking them for bringing you here this far. I know whoever listens to this in the second deck, the second set of cards, there's a reason you need to hear it because um, it may be a fam family lineage piece that's healing and um, they're here to help you, guide you, assist you. You just remember to ask for the help. And when you ask for the help, then let it go. So that's that one. Um, I'm also interested in the seven of fire. When I, you know, even though that other sevens in the other deck is still a message, an ongoing message, um, 
<laughs> triple sevens like holy man isn't that a good luck at the at the slot machines like triple seven i think right okay so um hmm. oh yes <laughs> i got lost that's that's kind of how it happens with me sometimes i get lost seven of fire Hmm. Now they don't have contrary to these, but I'll tell you what it's about. A delicate young maiden kneels before a lion, tenderly offering him nourishment. She trusts the spirit of the animal and knows that by calling in courage and facing her fear, the lion will also be unafraid and yield to her. Seven of spiraled flames descend from the sky in radiant blessing. This maiden is here to celebrate the courage you have found to face your inner demons that you may confront with sureness and fortitude all of the outer demons in your life. Courage is known through total trust and honesty with yourself. Courage comes from your inner fire where you find the will, strength, and passion to meet the tests before you. Continue to blaze your way on the lion path of courage. Like I said, next week's about tests. <laughs> so if you pick this pile, and yes, it's in reverse, the only thing I is telling me about that is just pay attention to the tests please do not ignore them and think that they're just going to go away they won't and oh then i have to look at this one too the look out so it's oh right by it it's a major account That one's straight up, yeah, upright. So in the ruins of a medieval castle. Oh, that's not the right one, sorry. <laughs> a man looks through binoculars to the crow's nest of a great masted ship. A battle is being waged on the deck below him. The card tells you to be on the lookout. There is a challenging situation, perhaps even a battle of sorts around you. You could experience a sudden fall or loss of your position. But if you are aware, you can make a backup plan that will help you ride through this difficult time a little more easily. This phase may be temporary, but it's important to keep your balance. Again, balance. Your strength will carry you through to a better time to come. Well, isn't that interesting? The Akashic Force, close your eyes and take a deep breath. Become the lookout and scan the things happening in your life and notice anything you'd like to connect, or sorry, you'd like to correct. And then take a moment to consider how to do so. After a few moments, let that go. Now turn your binoculars to look into your future. What do you see on the horizon? So, yes, you got to do the inner work. Yes, um, you need to see that. But you also have to consider about letting it go, whatever isn't working in your world. And next week is going to be about that. Let it go, and then you'll be able to have determination and stamina moving forward with the seven of acorns. And where the little book go? Oh, that's too funny. Ah, here we go. Seven of acorns. No, I think shells is about my name. Seven of acorns. Let's see the seven of acorns. Reversed message. So yeah, he fights for values, never settles for less than he deserves. His manner of leadership drives him to stand up to opposition without backing down. He helps you seize the energy of determination to meet challenges. And so if it's in reverse, do not allow discouragement to cast a shadow over you be patient and trust your inner voice so again this is saying the same thing as the other pile um and do not give in to defeat exhaustion stress like i was saying do not give in to that 
because something big is happening. Whoever picked this, you have help. Um, you have courage. Just understand how courageous you really are, and and that the universe is putting things into balance, into harmony and balance. That's all that's going on right now. Well, that one is pretty intense. Um, let's see. Yeah, again, it's, I'm just getting an image of relationships challenge, challenging. Um, this one feels more work related to a degree. Um, and there's a twin flame. Somebody, somebody is dealing with a twin flame. Um, tired, tired of the game of chasing. So that's what's going on with that. So don't give up on yourself. That's what I hear. Don't give up on yourself. Have courage. Stick it through for the next until at least November. <laughs> oh my goodness. Love and blessings for that. Love and blessings. Okay, we're going to go on to pile three. Pile three is the Herkimer diamond. If you picked pile three, we have Gaia's garden right side up. Many paths. Ooh, ooh, ooh. The love card in reverse. The two of C's. So this is like the two of cups. And the dolphins. And so new love is coming in. And you may be choosing a new path. Um, this feels very twin flame. whoever it is is coming around Halloween. Mm. Yeah, new love. It could be brand new love too. This is uh, in reverse. Up in the air, 18. <laughs> up, up and way. And this is in reverse. Five of crystals, persistence, new possibilities. Well, I get the feeling with this being uh, in reverse, and I'm going to turn these around now. Whatever it was you were doing, in regards to um, feeling out in the cold, it's it's going to change. New possibilities are happening. Guy's garden, fruition, abundance, reaping what you sow. So. If you chose a path, there's many to choose from. Which one is it? This here is about a reverse card. To, so it's in reverse. So it just means there's a bit of a, there's a bit of a delay. Things are going to be up in the air. And it's just going to be a little messed up for a bit. This is another decision thing. Should I stay? Should I go? It's like, we have been trying to get together like forever. See this couple? Everything's up in the air. Everything. Can't make any, can't move. Frontwards, forwards, backwards. Can't move. You might feel like this about a job. So some of you, this might be about a job. Um, you could take many paths. Maybe you, you could pick a new career, an old career, same thing, different people. 
whatever you think it might be. Dream four is seven again. Sevens, guys. Sacred dream. Follow your sacred dream. Follow your sacred dream. This is nine. So this is going to change soon. This is like nine is completion. And two of C's, love. Now, in this deck, they don't read it reverse. So I'm not, I have a sense that this isn't trying to say that. It doesn't read these in reverse. I'm just saying there might be a bit of a delay because things are up in the air, but your true love is coming in in October, but you're not going to be able to get together. Like you're not going to be able to have a happy ever after. So it, new possibilities aren't happening because of that. You're aware of them, but it's stuck right now. Um, but they are going to happen. That's what it's saying. They are going to happen. So don't, don't throw in the towel because there's other things like lots of things of abundance. So this needs a couple of um, soulmate cards. I didn't do it in the other one, but maybe the messages that come out with this. Um, will be good for the second deck as well. Love is the expression of God, goddess flowing through you. Love is a sacred union, a great creative power, which through the emerging of two souls becomes an exploration of the divine. So they're confirming that this is a twin flame situation um, or a soulmate at least. Um, and when you come together, it will be through creative power. Um, the path that you take will actually create it more abundance and not. So this is, this is true love. True love is around the corner. That's really this pile speaks about that. Um, hmm. I'm not concerned about this card, this, this hair, many paths, 34. Because it's a seven. The essence, all paths lead to spirit. What you bring to your journey is what will determine if yours is a path of suffering, a path of wisdom, a path of bliss, or a path of loss. Consider the traveler who met two stonemasons. He asks one what he is doing, and the mason replies, I'm squaring out this stone, he asks the other, who is doing the exact same thing, and gets the reply. I'm building a cathedral. One man has a job, and the other man has found his work in calling. He is part of an endeavor much greater than himself. Be sure you pick a path with a heart. So that was speaking that in the first uh, set of cards. The invitation is your call now is to take a big, bold step and leave the beaten path. Heaven and earth are conspiring on your behalf to support you in this move. Do not dilly-dally let your myth that you miss the moment. It's time to sail into the uncharted. Be sure you attend to both your path through this earth as well as the journey through the stars. The medicine you have outgrowing your current situation and risk losing your way in your own backyard. You are being called to step out of your comfort zone. Respond now while the call is still a gentle whisper. Even though the woods look thick and impenetrable, Venture in and let nature guide your steps through the dark until you reach your destination. Remember, if you do not know where you are going, any path will take you there. Yes, it will still take you there. The question is, do you have the courage? Or are you just going to let it be up in the air? Forever in a day. I think we have to look at that card. 
18 up in the air. Hmm. A man and woman gaze with the anticipation at a hot air balloon in the bright blue sky and the balloon flies high above the hills and the contents of the balloon's basket are hidden from view. During this time of your life, there are aspects of an important situation that seem hidden to you. You may feel a strong, almost urgent desire to know how it's going to turn out. You can connect with your spirit guides in the Akashic Records and ask for a little insight. But there are elements that are unknown and at this time, unknowable. There is too much about this situation that is still up in the air. This could be due to the influence of others who are undecided. Or some events may not have yet come to pass or unexpected discoveries are yet to be made. Trust is the only way for you now. If you push too hard to know or to influence the outcome, you might push that outcome away. Let go of all urgency and give the situation to your higher infinite self, who will take care of it all. Time is required to know more about this matter, and time doesn't matter to your internal self. Whose power and love are always with you, for now and indeed forever. What else do you need? Nothing but trust, the deepest knowing that all you seek will be revealed to you in the right time. So, if it's about a job, it may not be the right time yet because you don't know what your love is at this time. And that's okay because next week you get to review it. <laughs> Something will show up to go, oh, right. I was dreaming that a long time ago and i get to revisit it now do i still want that dream does it feel yummy to me still does it feel exciting because if it doesn't feel exciting then don't go down that path that's what it's saying don't go down that path and if it's a relationship um which i think we need to look at this card Let's see, two dolphins play and dance in the water of love, representing intimate relationship on all levels. Two waterfalls flow into one, just as individuality forms the strong basis of true you. Merging into oneness comes as the isolated ego is surrendered into the ocean of love. Love is who you are and is all around you to experience. Open your heart fully to the relationship you deserve. So, again, there's abundance around the corner if you choose to love yourself then the path you take will be very obvious. And then you will not have to look up in the air and just wonder where it's going to land. But you, yes, it's also about taking action. So the five of crystals is talking about taking the action to do that. And, you know, this is for the relationship part. This is to do with a career, a venture, a project, something like that. Here's my sense crystals and not being able to make up your mind about which should I jump in full force? I don't feel like I should. I don't feel like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing in my dream. So, but spirit does that quite often. It disguises itself. Sorry, I'm having trouble finding the crystal. <laughs> Where are you? That's shells, that's feathers, that's shells, so, so, so. Where are the crystals? Ah, here we go. Persistence and new possibilities. Yeah, see, this is wishes fulfilled, but it's reverse. When your heart rules your thinking, emotions can cloud your perspective. Give yourself time to find your balance and your strength will return. So again, it's balance. Again, it's about strength. Have strength. Next week, oh my goodness, are we going to get tested about strength and resilience? And can you stick it out? Somebody, someone's going to have a run-in with somebody, a conflict. Um, it's not going to be a pleasant encounter. 
you might want to think about that what it could be and it could be a new love uh, that you are in and in the end it's not what you thought it was going to be you're very disappointed but here's the deal you can pick another path and the abundance will still be there that's what it's saying okay well that takes us very close to the end so i'm going to now move this these cards so that we can see if there's which piles that you picked and if you need a, another card or you want another card red for clarification um that's what's nice about having people online for this because when you're doing it with nobody you don't get to do it so jump on in there michelle <laughs> she's good are you hiding michelle <laughs> my ipad fell down oh <laughs> I, I moved it closer and it fell down right um are we still recording this part? We are. I can stop the recording. Yeah. Would you like that? Goodbye, everybody. Bye. And just before I close the recording, um, I just want to say thank you for showing up and picking a card or a pile. And if you need a personal reading to get more insight into your answers, then please contact me at Carell at kilifestyle.ca. That's C-A-R-E-L-L -L at kilifestyle.ca. And the information will be down below. Share, like, and hit the subscribe button. And we'll see you soon. Yes.